in God's songs and to know that he was already waiting for us here is a comfort to our lives I agree the beloved church and you that visit us with the peace of the Lord Jesus in the meditation of the Lord the word of the Lord tonight will be in the book of Revelations chapter 5 Revelations 5 we're going to read just one verse Revelations verse 9. The Bible says the following. And they sang a new song saying, You are worthy to take this scroll and to open its seals, for you were slain and have redeemed us to God by your blood out of every tribe and tongue and people and nation. Blessed be the name of the Lord. The church may be seated. We'll still hear a song that is going to be sang. Glory to Jesus. Let us let the Holy Spirit speak to our hearts. Glory to Jesus.
This is the door, the God that we serve tonight. Glory to Jesus. Holy, holy is the name of the King of Kings. If you came here tonight, the, I came, the ob objective of us to be here tonight is to be fed and blessed and receive the grace uh, that the world cannot give us, uh, peace and uh, true joy, uh, happiness that cannot be explained. The song that had just been sang speaks of a uh, a king that cannot be explained and there is no explanation the science uh, endorses it every time that the specialists in science try to bring to the realm of science God's miracles they end up uh, shooting their own foot because they end up confessing that only a God like our God can could have done the things that he does and the word that we just read tonight, it is in the book of Revelations. It is a word that speaks of something, that speaks of a price. The world has distorted and made a, a great confusion with his, its uh, worth, with its values. For the world, every man has a price. Isn't it what we hear? Every man has his own price. In, matter, in the matters of uh, honesty and corruption, in the matters of verifying someone's integrity. The world refers to this as something uh, given. Everybody has his price, but tonight we're going to speak of a price that cannot be accounted. It's the price of your soul. Do you know that your soul has a price? Tonight, you're going to hear from the Lord that you have a price. Your soul has a price. But this price, not every world and silver and, and or anything that is monetary in this world, that if it was put together, could have paid the price of one single soul or a single person. Because for us, our soul is extremely precious. You know why? Because the price that was paid was was a price of another person to give us eternal life. In the Old Testament, once a year, the the heads of households would take a lamb or, an, or a smaller animal to demonstrate their repentance for everything that they have done that was wrong during the year. And then the animal was killed, and the person that brought the animal was taking the animal to represent that iniquity, their sin. And an animal that had nothing to do with the guilt of that man or that woman or that family would die to give that man freedom, to give them the feeling that he was free, that his sin had been atoned. But every time that we see this on the Old Testament, it is, it is pointing to prophetically to a sacrifice that was going to be made by a man that could be compared to a silent lamb and his name is the Lord Jesus Isaiah speaks of Jesus with this property he had no appearance he is no beauty he had no beauty a man to whom people hid their face nobody wanted to look like Jesus nobody wanted to Jesus as a reference of a, as a, of a model of beauty of a physical appearance because he was a simple man and uh, in the moment of his betrayal, it was necessary to use a code to identify him because he was so similar to everyone else of that time, the Jews, that it was necessary something to identify him. And this Jesus that we are speaking about, the Bible says that he was going to be handed as a silent lamb that goes to be killed. And my brethren, it's not common uh, lamb that do not cry or, or, or it's extremely when it's being brought to be killed. The lamb may not be a very a rational animal, but it knows the stress and it knows that it's going to be slain. And the moment of the slay of uh, 
lamb is a moment where we can hear this, the sound of the lamb. But in the case of the Lord Jesus, the Bible says that he was going to be handed and he was going to die as a silent lamb. That even if he wanted to cry, he couldn't cry. And we wanted to come to uh, concentrate on this moment of suffering of the Lord Jesus so that anybody that enter here may not be deceived. And do not leave this place without having the complete realization that our soul has a great price. Jesus, he suffered much bef uh, a lot before, much earlier than going to the cross. When before going to the cross, Jesus told to his disciples that he was going to die on the cross. And man, he reacted in, in a different way. Another thing that nothing is going to happen to you, I will defend you. But the truth is that it is necessary that we die. It is necessary that I go to give you eternal life. But I'm not going to leave you orphan. I will give you my Holy Spirit. He is imprisoned, and, and at the moment of his imprisonment, we don't see there any action of a resistance of the Lord Jesus. Much on the contrary, the one that was supposed to betray him comes to him and he greets with the greeting of life Judas comes to Jesus and said hi master and in other words he was saying you leave master and the answer could have been so many others if Jesus were like one of any one of us we have a temperament and different way of acting if it were many of us it would have been different it would have been a different answer we may have acted with anger or a feeling of frustration or disappointment very a great disappointment he was uh, moments earlier he was at the table with the lord and when he said that one was going to betray him many wanted to know and he said in a symbolic way he said the one who uh, to whom i'm going to give uh, was something that you would do when somebody was sitting at the table to show an exceeding love to someone. The bread was broken and Jesus would do this in a way that nobody did before. He would he would do this in a very sim uh, interesting way. He would break the bread and give a piece to each one and he said he would say drink and eat. And when at the moment when he was supposed to give the bread to the, the one that was going to betray him, he would dip it into the wine before giving the bread. But too many, many disciples may have not noticed what was going to happen. But at the moment in which they come to the Lord Jesus to identify him, he gave him a kiss to identify Jesus. And the answer that Jesus gave was the answer that the most beautiful answers that Jesus gave in the Bible. Why have you come here, my friend? Jesus called him a friend, showing that the love of the Lord was with him, with, with Judas up until that moment. The moment on the table, what the, uh, the piece of the bread was dipped in the, in the wine, even though I know the size of your sin, uh, even though I know the cruelty in your heart, I love you. And the Lord is telling to each one of us they have uh, uh, an, a sinful nature. I, he's telling us, I love you, and I'm going to give you the bread with, uh, that was dipped in, into the wine. The Lord has been our friend. He's our beloved one. And even though we betrayed the Lord with our actions in our daily lives, the Lord still called us friends. He called us friends. He was imprisoned without resistance. He was taken away. He was whipped. He was slapped many times on the way to the place where he was going to be slain. The word of the Lord says that somebody was compelled to help him. He was uh, ill. Before getting there, the Bible, uh, he w was praying and he was afflicted greatly and he took a couple of disciples with him, but they were na not able to keep uh, awake. And the Bible said that he was so afflicted that he sweat blood. Imagine uh, how much love he, Jesus had for you and I. 
And at the moment, they're doing crucifixion with nails on his ha hands and feet. Blood was was pouring from every part of his body, the crown of thorns. And we see the fulfillment of the prophecy of Isaiah, like a, a silent lamb being taken to be slain. And the words that came out of the lips of Jesus are words that could not be described. Nobody could understand his words. He looked to those that were going to that were crucifying him, and he looked to heaven and said, "God, forgive them, because they don't know what they are doing." My brother and sister, I invite you to meditate on this expression tonight. Imagine the degree of love of God, the person, the Lord Jesus, to look to an angry crowd filled with anger and hatred and say crucify him crucify him and Pilate even said I don't have any blame and this man you want me to crucify an innocent person and they would say if he's innocent may his blood fall upon us and Jesus answered forgive them because they know what they are doing and it is our nature uh, sinful nature um, uh, nature that is linked to do uh, what is wrong, but the Lord expressed in a, the best, uh, the greatest way of expressing love. He sent His only Son to die the most shameful death that existed at that time. The criminals of greatest uh, danger were the ones that were killed by crucifixion, and He died in that way. To the uh, before the moment that he expired, he uses also another expression that shows to us that he was not forced in any way. The expression that he uses is, Father, in your hands I give, I hand my spirit. In your hands I give my spirit. One of the criminals that was being crucified with him, he, he would mock him, saying, If you are the Christ, if you are the Son of God, free yourself and free us as well in a way, in a mocking way, a criticizing way, in a sarcastic way. And the other reproached him, saying, we are here because we deserved it. But this man, he has no blame. And he directs to Jesus with uh, humbleness and repentance for all of his years and crime and misery and dishonesty of life without pleasing the Lord and he said Lord remember me when you enter into your kingdom there it was the expression that conduct men to the eternal go gospel that brings men to a gospel that is not for this life because for this life they were both finished together with Jesus for these two criminals it was the end for this life in a few moments they would be dead. For this life, everything was over. But they needed to pay attention for detail because after death, there is a final judgment. Our soul needs to give account to God. And one of them didn't understand this. He mocked, he criticized, and laughed. And the other repented. The other said, Lord, remember me when you enter into your kingdom. My brethren, the the wonder of salvation as we sang as we we're preaching this salvation has no limit the salvation of god has no limit even this man in that circumstance in that situation he was able to hear from god's lips today will be with me in paradise and that that day the lord jesus he was going to be killed and at the instant and the other man as, as well and he was would be with his salvation guaranteed blessed be the name of the lord he was purchased he was purchased with the price of blood there was a youth doing jesus's ministry he was a son of a rich family that came to jesus and complimented him he said good master he said why do you call me good there is no good other than God. And this compliment was not a free compliment. It was a way of uh, trying to convince Jesus to uh, 
um, to give him an answer that was going to be pleasing to his heart. And he asked, what is necessary for me to do in order to earn eternal life? And Jesus said, uh, follow the commandments, honor your father and mother, you shall not kill, everything that is in the law and you will be saved. And he answered very proudly and answered, I have done it since I was a child. And in his heart, he felt that he was saved. But he answered this to the Lord Jesus. Jesus, being all knowing, he knew what he was in his heart. He knew exactly what his, was in his mind. And he said, If you have done all of this, there is one thing, only one thing left. Go, sell everything that you have, give to the poor, and follow me. And there is a message. There is a revelation of something that is hidden, and the Lord reveals. That man was a man that was considered religious, and many of us are religious. We think that because of our actions, because we pay taxes, because of good citizens, because we help the deficient to cross the street, we do charity and we help our neighbors, that we will be saved. This is um, a lie. And the Holy Spirit just told me to make it very clear. This does not bring salvation. But when this man said that he did everything since he was a child, he heard from Jesus the answer that he needed to hear, not, but not the one that he wanted. The answer that he wanted was that Jesus would say, if you do everything, then you are saved. You are all right. But in fact, he, the heart of that man was attached to the things of this world. And that's what the world has done to men, humanity. Man of this world that doesn't have the Lord Jesus, it is at m the mercy of the enemy and of the things of this world. And there is a gospel that is being preached out there that speaks of the blessings and the victories for this life. And this is the great risk that humanity has been going on. Uh, um, people uh, considered uh, that uh, money is personal goods, gold, silver, but only for this life. But what is going to happen when uh, the, this life is over? When the end of this life comes, you are not going to take anything from this life. And you, much on the contrary, you will leave everything here. And sometimes there's a, a you leave behind a confusion because if family may war and fight for this, and may sometimes a person died, and you, you, he leaves his goods so that the living may find and kill themselves, one another, for this. But the answer for Jesus to that man was that remove your heart from, from these things of this world. Don't put on your heart the things of this world as the most important things in the world. In other words, don't allow your mind and heart be attached to this and come and follow me. And that's the word of the Lord Jesus, come and follow me. But the words of the Lord says that this man did not understand the message from Jesus. The Bible says that he left saddened because his heart was too attached to the things of this world. But tonight the invitation of the Holy Spirit is that, that you understand the text that we read in the book of Revelations that speaks of a, a, a song a song of a redeemed soul because when this Jesus died he said I will resurrect on the third day many didn't believe and then they were able to see him personally and have an experience with the Lord Jesus revealed and he said I will come back I'll come back to take my beloved church I'll come back to take my precious bride and at the moment of resurrection the women went to the tomb and as they arrived there, they thought that they were talking with the uh, garden keeper. But the tomb was empty and the stone had been already removed. And they went running back to, to, to speak with their the disciples and friends and to confirm what they had already said. And the word of the Lord says that they were surprised when they arrived there and saw that empty tomb. But there was something that was very important that was happening in the, the culture of the Jewish of that time, which was the way you left your napkins when you were at the table 
and you left if you were eating and you were going to come back, you folded in a very polite way in order to say that you were going to come back to the table. But when they entered the tomb of Jesus Christ, they saw the sheets on the floor, but they saw that the, the sheet that was supposed to be on the face of Jesus, it was folded. And there was a message that Jesus was saying that he was coming back. He promised he was coming back. He's going to come back. To take whom? To take those that have their souls purchased with the price of blood. He's going to take those that have their uh, clothing washed with the blood of Jesus. And now you have this privilege to be introduced to this Jesus that makes an invitation to those who have thirst come to the waters, come and buy without money and without price, honey and milk. You're, you're coming to receive a salvation that is not going to cost anything. There is no money that you can um, gather that would be able to pay the salvation for the salvation. The Word has shown to us that there's a man that came tonight that he thinks that salvation can be acquired with um, material goods and the uh, spiritual gift that shows to us that this man he was extremely saddened and anguished and afflicted and he spoke to himself I can no longer withstand it um, what I'm going through but the Lord asked to tell you you cannot withstand it but now you're going to meet a Jesus that already paid a high price for your salvation us as a church you have the obligation to tell you that you're going to come and you're going to acquire the salvation for free. You're going to buy without, acquire it without price. You and I, we don't have any means. Our resource and intelligence, none of it will take us to heaven. But the sacrifice of Jesus Christ, Christ in the Calvary will give us this blessing. Come and receive for inheritance this kingdom that is being prepared. The text that we just read speaks of a high price that has already been paid. A price that was paid so nations and nations may inherit salvation. They sing a new song. Worthy you of open up the seals and have redeemed us to God by your blood out of every tribe and tongue and people and nation. The word says that he came for those that were his. The project of salvation of a Jewish but the Jews had despised him. They didn't want it. And those who believe in his name is given the right to enter into eternal life. May your Brazilian, Russian, Japanese, Chinese, whatever is your nationality, tonight is being presented to you as salvation that is accessible. It doesn't matter your nationality. It doesn't matter your lineage you come from. It doesn't matter you're a son of, a daughter of. It doesn't matter how much you study you have, doesn't matter how much money you accumulate, the world accumulate uh, material goods. But there's a moment in when he is called, he is uh, collected death. That is the most uh, certain thing that, we're, that is in life. One day we'll die, unless Jesus comes uh, before that. But we we'll all depart. When we close this life to this life, where are we going to open up our eyes? doing on our uh, eternal judgment. We're going to be judged by, from what we did and and the Lord want us to present in this uh, final judgment with our uh, clothing washed by the blood of Jesus. We may enter in, on this tribunal with uh, a seal that was uh, piercing the cross saying that where my death was paid in the cross of Calvary because exactly this is what Jesus was represented when he died in the cross of Calvary. He presented the price paid for my death and your death for the, the price of our nature. And blessed be the name of the Lord. We're going to hear from the Lord. When we accepted Jesus as our Savior, we played with, paid, we, re we earned, acquired it without price what nourishes us, what make us grow, what brings us close to the Lord and strengthen us and gives strength to overcome any difficulty in this life. We live here, we work here, we raise children here, 
but we don't belong in this place. We belong to another kingdom, the kingdom that is prepared for us. We are citizens of heaven. Our most important citizens here is the one that is going to be the right to hear, Come, beloved of my Father, inherit the kingdom that is prepared for you. The Lord wants us, each one of us, that to leave this place understanding this and leave recognizing that only in Jesus there is salvation. Only in Jesus there is eternal life. Only this name, and the sweet name that we can find, that means to receive uh, eternal rest from the part of the Lord. God has already shown that He has visited our lives through this the period of praises. Uh, during the moment we were, as we were praying, praising the Lord, the Lord opened up our mind and visited men and women, revealing Himself as the only insufficient Savior to their lives. The Lord has also shown that there is a couple tonight there is already tired of going, f jumping from place to place, seeking peace, seeking salvation, seeking eternal life. But they have never, uh, have not found yet. And the word uh, wants to, uh, told us to tell you that I call you for uh, work of the Holy Spirit, uh, present the Lord Jesus, uh, purchase all, so the price of blood and die on the cross to guarantee us eternal life. And that's the place that the Lord wants you to be. Your search is over, uh, but before your salvation was compromised, but now if you want, if you comprehend and you accept Jesus as your Savior, today your name will be written in the Book of Life. You leave this place with the assurance of salvation, with the assurance of salvation. May God bless you that each one of us understand that we have a price, but this price is not man in the world is going to place on us. God placed a price on us, and the price that the God placed on us is he already paid, sending his son to die on the cross for us. Let us close our eyes and continue to praise the name of the Lord. And may tonight be a night of salvation. Tonight is a night of salvation. If you hear my voice, don't harden your heart. Open the door of your heart.
Praising Him, the Lord. The, the one that removes sin from the world. Bless me your name, Lord. And they sang a new song saying, Worthy are you to, to open up the seal and have redeemed us to God by your blood out of every tribe and tongue and people and nation. You that entered here tonight, you are hearing the invitation from the Lord. Come to the water. Come to salvation. Come and purchase without money and and blood. This it, 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 it's your decision. The animal soul trying to break into our hearts, and but the Holy Spirit is gentle. He's knocking and he's trying to open the, uh, waiting for us to open the door. If you open up the door, your name will be written in the Book of Life. If you open up, you receive a salvation that depend of the things of this world. You'll be a part of this tribe, this tongue, and this nation. And you enter into the glory with the Lord. Accept Jesus as your Savior. Today is day of salvation. Tonight, the Holy Spirit guided you to this place. You may have entered here in your free will, telling yourself, I'm going to uh, answer the invitation of a friend. I'm going to be polite. But it was the Holy Spirit that put this in your heart. He is the one who brought you here. And He is the one who is speaking to you tonight. Here, my son, open up the, the door of your heart. Allow me to enter and... and eat with you. This is the blessing and salvation in the Lord Jesus. Now we're going to have a word of glorification to the Lord. Lord, we praise you because it's good to be gathered here to praise your name, to meditate on your new word and to sing songs. The offers of this world, they ha it is an empty happiness. It does not compare to the joy that we receive in you. It's true happiness. We thank you because we have you as our Father. We give you glory and hallelujah in the name of Jesus. We're going to pray closing the service. And we want you to know that you are very welcome to, to this place. This is the house of our Father. The Lord has been our Father. He's our good Father. He is our Shepherd, the good Shepherd. The Bible said the good Shepherd gives his life to his sheep. He died in the cross to save us. We, we want you to feel good here, in the same way we feel here. And at the end of the prayer, as we uh, finish the service, remain where you are. We're going to go towards you. We're going to wish the peace of the Lord. We're going to be pray with you, whatever is your need. We're going to ask the Lord that you, you, are, you coming here it may not be a vain visit, but you may have a, a pro profound experience with the Lord. Lord, receive our gratitude, uh, the gratitude of our heart, the gratitude of a redeemed soul, because we are happy in your presence. To know that our name has been written in the book of life, and to know that we have been purchased with the price of blood, and soon that we'll be with you in glory. Take us home in peace for a week of glory. But we thank you for each life that entered here in tonight, and that everyone may live. Having Jesus as uh, their only sufficient Savior, we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. The church may be seated. The church will remain in their seats, and uh, the group is going to sing softly to uh, prepare for you the right environment so you may leave this place with the assurance that we have this meeting with the, your Jesus, your Savior. The works and deacons are here at your disposal. Raise your hand or ask someone beside you to raise their hand and remain with your hand. Stand 
right reason until someone comes to you to give you this peace to offer you this peace and to know that there is this love that is abundant among us remain with your hand reason until someone sees you Blessed be the name of the Lord. The church in prayer and fellowship so that the one that wants to um, accept Jesus may do this in a way that is convenient to for their praise of the name of the Lord. Tonight is a night of salvation. Glory to Jesus.